Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into the Untamed. We're diving into episode 10. We've made it to the double digits, y'all. That doesn't mean we're anywhere near close to the end, but we've made it to the double digits. Um, yeah, so I gave you guys the same challenge on episode 9 that I've been giving for the last few episodes to see if you guys could get the reaction up to 500 likes before within the week before I recorded my reaction to the next episode. And if you did, I would give you guys double reactions for the coming week. Unfortunately, you guys did not get episode 9 up to 500 likes. We came really, really close with episode 8. And actually, we ended up getting it to 500 likes, but it was after the one week cut off. Um, and it was like just on the other side. So I was like, ugh, so you guys came really close there. But yeah, episode 9, we, we think we're still like 150 to 200 short, which I'm like, I, I don't know how else to how else to get you guys to like the videos. I don't know. Um, because I think as of right now, we had 1,700 views and only like 350 likes or something like that, which, you know, it's cool. But like at that point, if there's 1,700 of you guys consistently watching the episodes, the, the least you could do is just like the video. Like, y'all keep coming back, like the video. And even if every one of those people who watched the video was just somebody who watched it, to click the link to go over to Patreon and watch it over there and then came back to comment or something like that. So even if everybody got two views on the video because they were viewing it twice on YouTube, that's still 800, 900, 800 and something, 850 likes potentially. So like, there's no reason we can't get to 500. So, sorry. Y'all only get one reaction this week, but we'll try again next week. So you guys got a week to get this reaction up to 500 likes. And if you do, by the time I record my reaction for next week, then I'll give you guys two reactions to the Untamed. But we're going to dive into episode 10 and just see where the things of the things go with the things of the things. Okay. So I popped up my little cheat sheet here so I can hopefully get most names right so I don't have to refer to them as this person that person that guy with the hair and that fine ass some some semblance of names but yes let's see so we started where we left off episode 9 we were entering the castle investigating all the dead people like hey why are all these people dead and Wuxian you know examined them look at their eyes saw that they had like the red veining or whatnot and you know deduced that they were turned into puppets before they were murdered um and the, assuming the yin iron is in play in some way shape or form I'm like okay well who could have done this and then the camera pans up and we see um zhu yang just sprawled out on top of the on top of the um the roof just chilling menacingly and just like proud of the work that he's done there so he we, we we get the impression very quickly that he is not somebody of a very i was gonna say not a very sane mind um but i don't know if that's the word i'm looking for like he's he seems very cognizant of what he's doing he just a mess maybe masochist might be the word i'm looking for i don't know psychotic definitely um but he, he, he's very happy with the calamity that he's brought about and he's happy with this cat and mouse this fighting he, he, like all of the everything that was going on taking place surrounding him in this episode he was just reveling in it so whether it was him fighting with these two fine ass other cultivators who flew out the woodwork um what, what were their names um Zhao Zheng Chen and Song Lan. So whether it was fighting with them or playing around with Wu Zhan and his little binding talisman that he's got going on, or just standing there looking talking to this person, that person, somebody threatens to kill him, this one threatens to kill him, this one's about to chop his head clean off, whatever. He's just in there with the same expression, just head tilted down, eyes looking up and just smirking his ass off. I'm like, Lord Jesus, this man either knows something, he, he is in on some big secret, he knows something hilarious, or he is just out of his goddamn mind. Um, but we had that whole fight scene and it was lots of fun. And like I was saying there, if it wasn't for the fact that he had 
killed all those people and seems to be reveling in the fact that he killed all those people and he enjoyed the process, he enjoys all of the calamity he's brought about. There's something about his personality that feels very re reminiscent of Wu Xiang. So like, they almost could be <laughs> the same character or related in a sense. Just one chose to go down this dark evil path of death and destruction and the other one is just mischievous but is just got a good natured heart and you know blah 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 um but there there's certain aspects of their personality that like just at least in that first meeting where i'm like damn these two could come from the same family bloodline they could come from the same clan for all for all i know um but anyway we captured we captured um zhu yang and then Nihai, oh, sorry, I'm not, not going to pronounce any that one, uh, but he showed up um, with Meng Yao and a couple other guards, and they were there to basically escort them back to their, um, back to their sect and take Zhu Yang with them, question them, they had no luck finding the Yin Iron, um, and at first I wasn't sure if I could trust um, Meng Yao, just because I, like, I know that I saw him at some point. It's been a while. It's been episodes. And since I watched episode one and two, it's been months at this point. Um, so it's like, I remember seeing his face, but I couldn't place who he was um, at first. And then the me the music that was playing behind him felt kind of ominous or menacing. I'm like, I don't know if I can trust you. Hmm, I don't know what's going on here. But I think that was just choice of atmosphere that was ha for things that were happening there and not necessarily tied to him um because as the episode went on i'm like oh yeah that was someone i shipped with i want to say i shipped him with um long john's brother um because he seemed so sweet and so so good-hearted so kind and you know you i remember feeling just really bad for him because i know once um he started talking with the one general and he's like oh you're you're her horror son or whatever it was i'm like I remember this explanation. I remember him being like an illegitimate son of this, that, and the other. And like, I remember all of that. So people tend to look down on him and not really take him seriously or not really give him the light of day. And like, yes, he's living in this, this sect. He's part of the sect and, you know, it's part of this family, but they don't really claim him. And it's like, it's, it's this whole strange dynamic. And it's, so it's like, I, I remember feeling, um, really empathetic towards him um, that first time that I did encounter him um, but he did not have a great episode um, let me tell you because we, we got introduced to this general guy who I don't know if the general is um, well no no never mind. I say I don't know if the general was the clan leaders son but the clan leader was our little friend over here, his older brother. And I don't think that older brother would have a son that old because he didn't look that much older than our little friend over here. So I'm like, no, I don't think that's the case. I think that was just his general. Um, Cause at first when we found out that um, Ming Yao killed him and we saw the look on the the clan leader's face, I was like, oh, he, he, he seemed like he just lost his son. And like, he was, mm. And, you know, maybe, maybe it was. I, I don't know. But, well, because no. Because then when he, Min Yao was, after he got banished, he was like, I thank you for adopting me into the, the family. So I'm like, maybe he is old enough to have a son that old. Child, I don't know. Y'all let me know down in the comment section. I'm spitballing stuff out into the air right now. But either way, there's... I want to say the captions had Min Yao call the general guy brother at some point, but I might have just inserted that narrative in my own brain um either way general was an asshole <laughs> plain and simple there's there's no other way to put it He's asshole through and through and through and through, and through. um i foresaw him dying at some point i didn't necessarily think it was going to be this episode or this soon but i didn't see him living through the end of the series but you know here we go but yeah Min Yao did not have a great episode he, he he was belittled berated but that's nothing new for him in this universe it seems to be you know run of the mill um and then, at first, when we saw that he had killed um, the general, I thought it was going to go down the path of, 
oh, it wasn't me, I was possessed, or, you know, um, what was, what was the other guy's name? Um, Zhu Yang. Zhu Yang used some magic to possess me, or he used a yin iron, and that took over me, and that's why I ended up killing him. It wasn't me, I was a puppet, or blah blah blah. I thought we might be going down that route, because when general, or when the clan leader came along, he's like, not me, not me. Mm -mm -mm. I'm like, okay, he cl he's being framed right now. He's being framed, he didn't do this. But then we got to the throne, and he's like, yeah, I killed him. I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. I, I, I take back all of, <laughs> I take back that whole thought process I had there like no I, he, he, I, I killed him because he kept taking credit for things and you know I, I didn't care that he treated me poorly everybody treats me poorly but like you know he, he's kept taking credit for the things and then I saw him let you know <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's late I'm boring myself now <laughs> um, he's like I saw him let Zhu Yang go and I, you know, we were arguing and I had to, blah, 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 which again, I still don't know that he necessarily had to kill him uh, without us being there or flashing back to see what transpired between them. Like if general guy came at him and started to attack him, then yeah, okay, self-defense. But I don't think that he just outright was like, hey, you let him go, stab. Like, mm, something doesn't quite add up there. Um, so there's more stuff that I would like, more clarification I would like there. Um, but yeah, the reasoning that he gave for why he killed him, didn't, didn't, it, it, it wasn't doing it for me. It, didn't, it wasn't quite doing it for me. I'm like, baby, no. You had all of this patience. Like, and I understand, you know, patience runs thin. At some point, you know, you, you, you run, you, you meet your limit. And, you know, you're getting berated and belittled day in, day out, day in, day out by the same person. Asshole, asshole of a person. Yes, there will come probably come a time where you kind of explode, all your feelings get out, and you know, it gets away from you, you can't really control your anger. Um, but, I don't... I don't know, like, it just didn't feel like that was the, the case with him. Here, like, it just, I don't know, I don't feel like we've... I don't know that we've built up enough for it. Like, yes, we saw him getting treated poorly, and all that kind of stuff, and it's awful. I don't know that we built up enough for him to just like outright, outright just kill him. Just felt like an odd, odd um, character choice for us to make for him. But you know, it is what it is. He's been banished from the clan, and we'll see what happens with him. Um, then we had. Long John left in the middle of the night while Wu Xian was passed out on his rooftop. So I'm assuming he went back to the cloud recesses because his um, the one other Wen Chao, um, Wen Wen Chao, um, said, you know, oh, we sent troops there to get the iron. So what do you think Long John's gonna see when he gets there? Calamity, and death, and destruction. You know, the cloud recesses and ruins. And you can see Wu Xian just like freaking out. Um, Uh, speaking of Wen Chao, well, the other, uh, Zhu Yang got freed, so we, we know that. Um, but Wen Zhao did, one thing I did notice is, because they mentioned that I think the Wen clan was extending an invitation to all the major clans for, I forget the exact terminology they used, but the first inner sun or something like that. first sun inside the clan or whatever some sort of ranking system but sons within the clans basically work sending an invite to them to for indoctrination blah 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 and if they didn't send somebody they were going to come and grab them themselves and when Chao did mention that Wu Xian had an invitation and not um, Zheng, um, Cheng, and I was like, that's interesting, because they're both coming from the same clan, but Wu Xian obviously being the adopted brother, it's like, that's an interesting, hmm, why are we doing that? Don't know why, don't know why, but it's interesting, it's just something that caught me interestingly. Oh, and we did, 
I kind of skipped over and kind of bouncing all over the place. Back when we had the other two um, cultivators, before they left, we found out that their master was, I think, the same master that was, uh, yeah, Wuxian's master or his mom's master, and he's been trying to find this Wuxian wanderer for the longest. Um, didn't get to go find them, but that's another little mention that we've had in the last few episodes. So it's like, okay, maybe at some point, maybe that's something that they're saving for later in the series. It'll become some prominent moment or something then. Um, let's see, anything else major happen? Um, lots of great fight choreography, as always, like I said, and lots of just great fashion, the robes. I love, 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 love. And like I said, I don't know if it's just me being more observant now or if there was a change in the costuming, but just getting some of the clothes up on some of these robes and the, the patterns, the textures, the textures, the combinations of textures are gorgeous. Oh, the detailing, such intricate detailing that I wasn't noticing before. And I'm like, oh, this is absolutely stunning. I live for these costumes. I love a good costume drama. And when the costumes just look like they had time and energy put into them and they just look ornate and just beautiful. Oh, I love, 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 love. So I love the costumes, love the soundtrack, love all the cheekbones. Oh, love them. Love them to death. And yeah, all in all, another really, really good episode. So hopefully you guys will be able to get this reaction up to 500 likes by next week so that I can give you guys two reactions next week. Um, otherwise, it's going to take me a very long time to get through this damn series at one episode a week. Um, it's going to take a very long time, though. So please, for the love of whoever y'all out there love it, 500. It's very, very easy. If you've opened the video, just click like and continue watching. It's very simple. But anyway, if you guys made it to this point, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah. I'm